Guys, have you ever wondered exactly what it is that makes amazing hair? You know, that rich, luscious hair that you see in the shampoo commercials? Well, can we break it down and can we quantify it? And the million dollar question, if you no longer have this kind of hair, can you get it back? Guys, I'll tell you now, you sure can. We've looked at the science, we've done the homework for you, and it's all coming right up. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here and welcome to the HairGuard YouTube channel. On this channel, we make science-backed videos all about combating hair loss and regrowing healthy hair. So if you are new to the channel, do consider subscribing. And guys, just before we get into the video on healthy hair, if you're watching this video because you're worried about your own hair loss, then what you can do is click the link in the description to take the HairGuard hair loss quiz. You'll answer a few short and simple questions about yourself and your hair loss, then you'll receive free, personalized, expert advice on how to regrow healthy hair. So guys, most of our videos are on some aspect of male pattern baldness or androgenetic alopecia. But today's video is a little bit broader and it will be of interest to everyone. Male, female, hair loss, or even no hair loss. Because the topic today is healthy hair. You know, hair that is healthy, looks gorgeous, and makes you feel young, attractive, and confident. So we're going to look at the specific parameters that make for an attractive head of hair. We'll look at how they can be broken down and quantified. And at the end of the video, we'll give you the most practical and real advice for regaining your healthy hair. Now guys, to understand the basics of healthy hair, we need to briefly go over the anatomy of the hair shaft. The hair shaft is the visible part of the hair. It's the part that has grown out of the underlying follicle and now protrudes through the scalp. It is basically what you call hair. So a single hair shaft is made up of three layers, starting from the outside and working our way to the core. These are the cuticles, the cortex, and finally the medulla. The cuticle is a layer of overlapping cells arranged a bit like fish scales, and it's critical to the appearance of your hair. We'll come to this shortly. Underneath the cuticle is the cortex, which makes up most of the mass of the hair shaft, and the central inner core of the hair shaft is the medulla. So guys, there are objective, definable factors that make up healthy hair. And the three most important ones are A, the shine or luster of the hair, B, its body or volume, and C, the extent to which the hair has been damaged by being overwashed, treated and abused every day, which is a process known as weathering. So we're going to break each of these down further. Now, the degree to which a hair shaft shines is simply a measure of how well it reflects light. A lot of light reflecting off the surface of the shaft gives the shine. Next time you see an advertisement for a shampoo or conditioner, notice how shiny and reflective the model's hair is. The cuticles covering the hair shaft are critical to the hair shine. Remember, we said cuticles look a bit like fish scales covering the hair shaft? Well, when the cuticles are in their natural state, lying flat and packed tightly against the underlying cortex, they reflect light well. But when the cuticles are disturbed, they lift up, making the surface of the hair more rough and less reflective. Conditioners leave your hair looking so nice, soft and shiny, precisely because they seal the cuticles. But their effect is temporary, and regardless of what you'll hear on commercials, they cannot do anything to restore your hair's health. They can only temporarily seal the cuticles before their effects fade, and you have to apply the conditioner again. Now, depending on what type of conditioner you use, conditioners can also be very good at hydrating the scalp, making the environment better for hair growth. What I'm gonna do is link you to the Hair Guard Biting Conditioner in the description below. We use ingredients like argan oil, coconut oil, and avocado oil, as well as biotin, which helps make the scalp a better environment for hair growth. Don't forget the product comes with a 180 day money back guarantee, so give it a try risk free. Now, when it comes to the volume of the hair, the two main parameters are the number or density of hairs and the diameter of the individual hair shafts. The hair shafts of people with fine or thinning hair have significantly lower cross sectional areas. In other words, the average radius of their hair shaft is smaller. So, when you consider that the volume each hair shaft occupies on your head is a square function of its diameter, you quickly realize that even a small difference in diameter can add up to a big difference in volume. So guys, we've looked at shine and we've looked at volume. Now let's look at the third main factor, so-called weathering of the hair shaft. Now, aside from age-related changes, which we will come to later, all the other damage to our hair is purely self-inflicted. The primary causes, as we will see, are chemical treatments and bad grooming habits. These produce degenerative changes to the cuticle layer of the hair and eventually the inner layers as well. 
This leads to weathered hair that is weaker, messier, easier to break, and without shine. The hallmarks of weathering are damaged cuticles and split ends. Split ends are when a hair shaft splits into multiple strands, and this usually happens at the tip. For a hair shaft to split, the cuticle must be severely damaged and a crack needs to form in the cortex. It's a total breakdown of the hair and an unmistakable sign that there is something really wrong. Guys, weathering also leads to frizz, which are those annoying, unattractive, disorderly hairs that stick out. Part of the cause for frizz are tiny electrostatic charges accumulating in the hair shaft, which cause them to repel one another. Conditioners have anti-static ingredients that can temporarily reduce frizz, but their effect is only temporary. Weathered hair also tangles easier and is more difficult to brush. Now, the longer the hair, the more severe the potential for weathering. For those of you with long hair, I want you to consider this. The hair shaft grows out at the rate of approximately one centimeter a month. So if your hair is 24 centimeters long, the tip is actually two years old. This means that it's probably undergone a few hundred washes and been subject to all sorts of abuse, from blow drying to straightening, heat irons, perms and semi-permanent dyes, you name it. Now we'll come to that later when I tell you how to prevent weathering. So hair slowly changes as we age. And listen guys, I hate to say it, but as you probably guessed, these changes are not for the better. The big factor affecting both men and women is pattern hair loss. In men, this usually starts from the temples or vertex of the head and gradually spreads. In women, pattern hair loss follows a more diffuse and thinning pattern. So rather than going bold in a specific pattern like men do, Women typically thin simultaneously all over the top of the head. But setting pattern hair loss aside, a change that affects all people, whether or not they suffer from hair loss, is the diameter of the hair shaft. This decreases with age. The decrease in hair diameter starts earlier in men, typically in their mid-20s, compared to early 40s for women. Smaller diameter means less volume. Hair also loses its elasticity as we age, and you can measure elasticity by seeing how much you can stretch the hair until it breaks. And sadly, hair also gradually loses its luster as we age. Another factor contributing to the decline of hair is graying. This typically starts in the 30s for men and women alike. So what about lifestyle? So we've explained the science behind healthy hair. And now comes the million dollar question. Can you restore your hair's health and its youthful appearance? Now, depending on your age, there are obvious limits to how much you can restore your hair. But guys, as I mentioned earlier, most of the damage to our hair is purely self-inflicted. We bring it upon ourselves. We buy into the commercials and we fork out on expensive products that are actually destroying our hair. Or, and I hate to say it, we often know what's right for our hair, but we are just too lazy to do it. So let's have a look at all of the self-inflicted, easily avoidable sources of hair damage. We'll start from the most important and unambiguous ones, and then we'll slowly work our way down. Guys, at number one is we've got hair dyes, and this is the big one. The single most important thing you can do to restore your hair's health. If you color your hair with permanent dye, stop dyeing it. All the other tips I'm gonna give you, taken together, probably won't do as much as this single step for your hair. Permanent hair dyes, they're like a bit of a nuclear bomb for your hair, and it works in a three-step process. First, the cuticles that protect the inner cortex of the hair shaft are lifted. This then allows the dye to reach the pigment that is deposited in the inner cortex and destroy it. The chemical formula finally replaces the natural pigment with the artificial coloring. This process causes irreversible damage in a variety of ways. The most obvious is a permanent disruption of the cuticle layer, which will never be able to regain its prior structure. The dyeing process also causes a degradation of various amino acids in the hair shaft. This leads to a 2-3% to weight loss per hair shaft. It also reduces the elasticity of the hair and renders it more susceptible to breakage. Dyed and bleached hair also absorbs humidity easier, rendering it more susceptible to changes in humidity. It also has more friction and tangles easier. Guys, I hope I've got the message across. It's basically a total disaster, and all the conditioner in the world will not be able to fix it. Guys, at number two, we've got permanent styling. This is when you use chemicals to achieve hair that is either permanently straight or wavy, depending on the natural shape of your hair and the styling that you want to achieve. Both these processes permanently alter the chemical bonds on the surface of the cuticle in order to change the shape of the hair shafts. They also change the surface of the hair to allow the absorption of the chemical treatment itself. As with the damage from hair dyes, no amount of conditioner can repair this damage. Guys, at number three, we've got heat treatments. 
This is another evolutionary novelty that our hair simply hasn't been designed to withstand. So ladies and gentlemen, please stop applying any sort of heat treatment to your hair. This includes blow drying or using curling irons. These dehydrate the hair and damage the cuticles, and they'll also accelerate the creation of split ends. There's nothing better for your hair than leaving to dry it off naturally. But if you're in a hurry, you can gently towel dry it, but you don't want to do it too forcefully. You want to be as gentle as possible on your hair follicles. Guys, at four, we've got excessive shampooing. Guys, shampoos are obviously necessary to clean the scalp and hair, but you don't want to overdo it. At HairGuard, we don't recommend you shampoo more than once every two days. Shampoos strip away the natural oils on your head and hair shaft, forcing your scalp to upregulate its production of these oils, which means that if you overdo it with shampooing, you will find your hair getting greasier faster and faster, leading you to shampoo constantly just to have presentable hair. It's a vicious cycle, and if you're already trapped in it, you're going to want to start working to escape it. The other thing you want to consider is that typical shampoo you'll find on the supermarket shelves contains around 30 ingredients, almost all of which will be artificial chemicals. That includes things like sodium lauryl sulfate, which shampoo manufacturers add to their formulation to give you a nice, rich foam. You know, that rich lava in the little bubbles that look so cool? Well, what your shampoo manufacturer isn't going to tell you is that sort of stuff is used in all sorts of detergents and industrial cleaning products. You do not want to be putting it on your head. In the description below, I've linked you to the Hair Guard Caffeine Shampoo, which is made with nothing but natural ingredients with no harsh chemicals. If you feel that you're being shortchanged with your current shampoo, then you might want to check it out. It comes with a 180 day money back guarantee, so it's risk free to try. Guys, at number five, we've got excessive brushing. Brushing or combing your hair stretches it, and if you overdo it, this can lead to breakage. So you want to avoid brushing your hair too often. Preferably, if possible, you also want to be using a comb with as wide teeth as possible. And when brushing or combing your hair wet, be extra careful. Wet hair has higher friction when combed, and it can also be stretched out more. But stretch it too far and the hair shaft will break. Guys, at number six, we've got smoking. Believe it or not, this is something that we've mentioned in other videos. There is a tentative link between smoking and male pattern hair loss. Some studies have found an epidemiological connection between the two. So, in other words, you take large segments of the population and compare smokers to non-smokers, and you find that smokers tend to suffer from more hair loss. Now guys, I'm going to be honest, this is not the strongest kind of evidence, and future studies might possibly discredit this link. But I think you'll agree that it's better to be safe than sorry. Now there is also some evidence linking smoking to premature hair growing, as well as to a decrease in hair diameter, leading to thinner hair. At number seven, we've got excess weight. There is some data out there to show that being overweight in women is associated with reduced hair shaft diameter. This ties in neatly with research in men, showing male hair loss linked to an increased risk of cardiac disease. Now, whether the effects on hair are due directly to the excess weight and associated complications, or if they're just a marker of an unhealthy lifestyle, is not yet clear. Now, this is a very, very big topic, and I'm not going to go into detail here, but I might do in an upcoming video. But again, Better to be safe than sorry, especially when your health is involved. So guys, to summarize, there is actually a formula for healthy hair, and we can break it down like this. Hair density, plus hair shaft diameter, plus intact cuticles, plus strong follicles, plus shine, plus no split ends, plus no frizz, plus no tangles, equals healthy hair. So guys, with this information to hand, and the realization that most damage to your hair is self-inflicted, unnecessary and easily avoidable, it is now within your power to restore your hair's health. And by eliminating all of these unnecessary products from your hair care routine, you'll also end up saving a ton of money. So you'll stop paying money to destroy your own hair. Guys, let us know what you thought about today's video in the comment section, and you can click the video on the screen to learn more about the link between scalp tension and hair loss. I'll see you in the next video.